And as promised, we told you we'd be right back. Welcome back to the Pete Maravich Assembly Center here in Baton Rouge on the campus of LSU. Joined by head coach Laura Beeman from Hawaii as they will take on LSU in game two Friday afternoon in the Baton Rouge Regional of the NCAA Tournament. Uh, for the media here uh, in person, Hawaii's practice will begin at 4.30. First 15 minutes will be open for the media and then they will close it down like we've been doing uh, all afternoon. With that, coach, welcome to Baton Rouge. Congratulations on your, on your season so far. I had a chance just to talk to some of your players uh, just a moment ago. Um, you've won seven of eight, five straight, and as I was telling them, four of four in January, but 10 and three since. So from the coach's perspective, uh, what seemed to have clicked and, and maybe what has made the difference to get hot at the right time to carry you here to Baton Rouge? First off, I want to thank the NC2A and LSU. You guys have been remarkable in hosting us so far. Um, so thank you very much for that. You've made the kids feel really comfortable. You know, I don't look at numbers a lot. Um, so what you just told me is like, oh, we've done okay in the last you know, seven games. That's pretty good. Um, you know, four and four in January, we had gone through some preseason injuries. Um, we would get on a little bit of a tear. We would have another injury, get on a little bit of a tear. Uh, and when I mean tear, just more playing well with one another. Um, so I think it, it's this last bit chunk of season is, is basically because we finally had some continuity with our lineups, with our rotations. Um, it's hard to come up with practice plans and starting lineups and a game plan when two days before you, know, you play a game, two kids go down. We had two kids go down in, in a matter of five days with knees. Um, so not only the, the physical part of that, but also the emi uh, emotional toll of losing players that late in the season in that way, one on the road and one in practice, it was a gut punch to this team. And we had to really take a deep breath and talk about our why, talk about our process, figure out what these kids wanted to do and where they wanted to go. And I think after we all kind of got in the fetal position and cried a little bit about the loss, um, we regrouped and said, let's go. Let's play for them. Let's play for our state. Let's, we know what our whys are. Let's go out and do it. And the effort and the enthusiasm for one another um, has been tremendous. And I, I really attribute it to these kids' resilience and how they like to play for one another and what they're doing. So I think that is, is really the main factor uh, of why we've done so well as to late. You know, a lot of people will see that Hawaii is coming to Baton Rouge and they automatically think of the flight. But you were just telling me you didn't go back to the islands. You came basically from the mainland. Was that strategically done? Was that done on purpose instead of trying to go all the way home and then turn around to go to destination unknown? Yeah, you know, last year we went uh, back to the islands um, after winning the tournament because Hawaii is an amazing place. The Aloha spirit is absolutely real and you don't know until you've been there and you've lived there and you've met our, the, our community. Um, we really wanted the young ladies to feel the celebration because uh, the program had not been in an NC2A since like 2016. And it was important for me to have them come back and be received at the airport with all the lay and all of the band and then to go on campus and have all the excitement. Um, hindsight, it was a little bit too much. You know, traveling then to Waco was a lot. Um, so this year it was, you know, when we win, we're going to stay in Henderson until the NC2A comes and picks us up in that nice little charter plane and flies us wherever we have to go. And the girls were okay with that. Uh, we had quite the celebration in Vegas. It's not too bad of a place to celebrate. <laughs> and um, it, we, had a, we had a big, big, big fan base that travels. It's known as the Ninth Island. And so we had a big fan base and our band and our cheer was there, our administrators, a lot of family. So we, we were well received after winning our, our conference tournament. Uh, but it was nice to be able to sleep on Sunday and Monday and kind of regather, um, watch the viewing, and then figure out we were coming here. Um, and just shorten the flight was, was nice. Yeah, well, great. Well, it's a pleasure to have you here in Baton Rouge. For Thank those you. who are joining us uh, online via Zoom, if you have a question, please hit the raise hand icon on your Zoom call, and we will come to you. And with that, we will open up to questions for Coach here on the floor. Please raise your hand so we can bring a microphone to you. Yes, Coach. Jim Klein, Peter with The Advocate. Um, could you talk a little bit about uh, – Lily's transfer, was, was that uh, after a recruiting battle maybe that she'd lost, or, or how did that all come about, and uh, how, how big has her addition been? It seems like she, she folded in very nicely. You know, COVID played a factor in how much we were able to watch Lily both, you know, on and off the island. Um, at times, the competition on the island isn't good enough for us to really compare to what we want our players to, you know, become, if you will. Um, and so she committed early out of the fear that she wasn't going to land a, a roster spot. And we had said we needed a little bit more time just because of what we had going on in our roster. So it was a little bit of COVID related. Um, once she committed to Cal State Fullerton, it was, oh, no, you know, we're going to have to play against this kid. And at that point, we went really hard after her sister. Um, and her sister is a phenomenal player, unfortunately, one of our young ladies that has gone down with an injury. 
and we went really hard after Jovi, and and you know nonstop, all stop, and fortunately we landed Jovi, and so when we landed Jovi, we had no idea Lily wanted to come back um, home, but obviously with the caliber of player she is, you know once she got on the portal, we made the call and said, hey, we would love to have you back, and she was said, coach, I just want to come and you know play for my family and play for my state. Had nothing to do with Fullerton. Jeff Harada does a great job there. Interconference travel is always a tough thing to deal with. Um, but it was more family, more Ohana, more of the Aloha spirit. Uh, and, and she had seen what we had done last year, so all of that played a factor. Uh, Michael Cobble from WBRZ TV here in Baton Rouge. Kim alluded to a relationship that you guys have. I don't know how well you all know each other or not, but just from afar, what is your thoughts on the job that she's already done here in year two? Oh, she's fabulous. Uh, I don't know Kim well. You know, she came to Hawaii, I think it was 11 years ago, for a tournament when she was with Baylor. And I believe they had come off their 44 0 season with Brittany Griner. And I remember when Brittany walked through the halls, I thought my team was going to just die. And I thought to myself at that moment, why did I take this job? This is, this is my first season here. And we had some, some heavy hitters come in that tournament. Um, she's very gracious. She's intense. You know, I remember when I was watching Kim and I was at a JUCO thinking that's one intense coach and, and players want to play for her because she's going to get in their stuff. Um, she's going to be prepared. There's no coach at this level that, that comes in for the most part and overlooks the team. She is not going to overlook us. Obviously, at a 14-3, and three, we know the odds. It's a David and Goliath. We all know that. Um, but as far as, as she goes, man, she's, she's one of the trailblazers in this this in our game you know she is what she did at Baylor was phenomenal she's come here and turned this thing around quick um you know she's a good fit fit here um so excited to say hello to her again um you know she, she's just done a fabulous job hi Laura Corey Diaz with USA Today Network um I, I guess retrospect's always 2020 but has has it been advantageous for you and your staff as well as the players to maybe have gone through some of that shuffling around with the rotation in the lineup when you get to this year there's there's maybe a little more experience a little more different lineups maybe playing together yeah I think that's a great point you know for a while our fans didn't know what we were doing I don't know if I knew what I was doing um but we didn't have choice you know it was this person is a game time decision and it was a no or this person's game time decisions is a yes and how do you put people back in getting chemistry, you don't want to lose a ball game. I think there were a couple times my rotations were bad and we probably lost a couple games because of that. And I have to take ownership of that. Hindsight obviously has paid off well because we've been able to play some people in the stretch either a little bit longer minutes or get a couple people on to give some people some breathers. Um, you don't want your season to go that way where you're always kind of fighting, but it's great to have a group of young ladies that has believed in our process and they bought into our process. And, you know, since... 11 years ago, I've walked in and said, this is a process of how we do things on the court, how we do things off the court. And to have a team that says, okay, we think you're a little crazy sometimes, but this is, we're going to believe in you. Um, that means a lot. It, it's humbling to have a team with all of the injuries and all of the you know, adversity we've had say, okay, coach, we know you got this and let's go. So I do think to your point, some of those different lineups have helped us. Um, trust me, particularly going in tomorrow, I wish I had five players that aren't here today. Uh, we're going to need all the help we can get. We know that. Um, but I do think some of that experience is absolutely going to be on our side tomorrow. Uh, Scott Rabelais with The Advocate. Uh, just want to make sure I got the story. I'm, I heard right. The, the player said that you said in a huddle during a game, we're, we're six possessions down, so let's go. Can you describe a little more about that game and situation? Yeah, it was the champ. Uh, speak to the resilience of your team that you've had this year. Uh, yeah, it was um, – one of the timeouts in a championship game. You know, we went into halftime, we were down, I think, 15, and we talked about the adjustments we needed to make. We talked about if you guys don't lighten up and have a little bit of fun, this game's going to get out of control. And that was the same message that I gave them last year against Irvine. We were down at halftime that you have to have fun in what you're doing, and that means you have to play hard, you have to lock in, you have to focus. That's fun. You know, going through motions isn't fun. And it was at one of the timeouts. I said, guys, we're six buckets down. We do this every day. And they were just kind of like, oh, that's it. And I was like, yeah, math is hard. And, you know, we're six buckets down. Uh, and they kind of chuckled. And it was stop or stop, let's go. Um, and they locked into that message. And they had a goal to be up at the end of the third quarter. We weren't, but we had cut into the lead. And then the fourth quarter, we had some great defensive possessions and just hit some big shots. And from there, you know, thank goodness, uh, Deja was in the right place at the right time. And Imani Perez gave her a beautiful pass. And uh, we won on that shot. 
media, would you mind if I follow up with something? Because I had a chance to talk to Deja when the players were here earlier in this, in this day and age of play me now or I'm leaving. Uh, this is a player that came to you and said, Coach, take me off the floor and bring me in off the bench. And she's your second leading scorer. I wanted to ask you from a coach's point of view, have you ever had a lot of players come to you and ask, make that request and what it's been like having her come off the bench? Because with her doing that, you're 13 and 5. I know you don't look at numbers yeah. a lot, but you're 13 and 5 since she came to you and said, Coach, bring me in off the bench. You know, ironically, she's not the first player that's asked me that. Um, you know, our style of play has always been, and my SID can give you correct stats because, again, I, I don't do numbers. <laughs> um, we've had one player of the year since I've been at Hawaii, even when we won the conference. I think we've had three or four sixth men of the year. So we play team basketball, and I think that for Deja, she saw, hey, when there's a little bit of sacrifice, we share the ball, I can come in off the bench and do more. And then she doesn't come off the floor, obviously. Um, I think that she just kind of felt like she needed to see the game better. It helped her mental. Um, but I think she also was like, this has been a, a recipe for success in the past. Let me just come off the bench. Let's see what happens. And unfortunately, she had played too many games to be sixth man of the year. Otherwise, she would have absolutely got that hands down. Um, she's a selfless kid. You know, she, when she says she's a winner, she's won four state championships out of Vegas. She's won two tournament championships since she's been here with us. The only other year she could have, we were shut down with COVID. That when she says she's a winner, she is. And so she's going to do what it takes to help this team be successful and continue to put us in a place of success. Coach, I was just curious, how short is your bench and, and what is your rotation? You know, we go 11 deep. Um, one's a walk-on, and, and she's a lot of our Y, too. She's born and raised in Hawaii and doesn't get on the floor. Um, you know, she's not a Division One player, but she is part of our Y. Um, we try to play 10 or, 10 or 11 if we can. Um, and so it's not a terrible by any means. It's not like we're down to six or seven kids. But when you're coming from 15 deep and three of those are starters, it's a little bit different. Um, and I'm not making excuses. These kids are going to show up tomorrow and we're going to play. You know, the outcome is going to be the outcome. We want to put ourselves in a position to win a ball game. We want to put ourselves in a position to grow this program. You know, everyone starts somewhere. And so we want to put ourselves in a position that, you know, if we're back here again next year, we're not a 14 playing a three, but maybe we're a 12, and we give ourselves even a better chance. On the men's side, you see the upsets all the time. We saw one today, you know, with Furman and, and Virginia, where it's a 14 and three. The women's side, we don't have that parity yet, and we need to get to that parity, and we need to put our, our team in a position. So, you know, we do have depth on our bench. We're going to play everybody, give these kids the, you know, opportunity. Um, it, not what I want it to be, but it is what it is, and we move forward. Hi, Evan Easterling, New York Times. You guys played a tough non-conference schedule. What do, you, what do you think the team learned through that period, and um, how was it able to develop through that period? Yeah, during non-conference, they were like, don't do it again. That's what they learned. Um, <laughs> you know, I think now they can look back and say that it's absolutely given us experience. It's, it's given us, you know, we've played in front of big crowds. We've played in front of rowdy crowds. You know, we're fortunate we have a great arena in Hawaii where we can play in front of some people. So it's giving us the opportunity to go in and play against teams we're not supposed to beat. And it's about finding the resiliency of your team and how they're going to compete against bigger, faster, stronger competition. Um, and you know when you go in, you're the underdog, but you're there. You signed up for it. So I think all of those experiences um, have led us to tomorrow's game, and we're excited to be in this position. Congratulations so Thank far you. on the season. Welcome to Baton Rouge. Thank you. That's going to wrap it up for our pregame press conferences today. Tomorrow, first game, Michigan and UNLV. That will be at 2 o'clock here at the Marriott Assembly Center, followed by Hawaii and LSU, approximately 445. And, of course, we'll be back online via Zoom for all the postgame press conferences. For the media here, Hawaii's practice starts in about nine minutes. First 15 minutes will be open for the media. Then they will shut it down, and they'll have the time for the rest of themselves. Great to meet you, Coach. Thank you. Congratulations. Good luck right. tomorrow. Appreciate thank you for everything. And thank you all for joining us. We will see you tomorrow for game day here at the Baton Rouge Regional for the Women's NCAA Tournament.